fact is, when we talk about the Word of God, that has to be the Word rightly divided. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote to his son in the faith, Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, when he talks about, you know, you have to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman, and not being ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Mm -hmm. You can, if you wrongly divide the Word of Truth, if you pick and choose the pieces out of context that you want to say, because they tickle the ears then you can turn the truth, a truth, into a whole line. Right. Now, I always use the example. So you can be accurate. Mm -hmm. I think one of the translations, maybe a translation I have, I'm not sure, says you have to rightly, you have to accurately handle the word of truth. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between being accurate and rightly dividing. Right. If I were to say to you that the Bible says there is no God, that's an entirely accurate statement. Absolutely. That's absolutely accurate. Because it says that. It is. It's not true no. because it's wrongly divided. That's right. What it says when you don't wrongly divide it is that only the fool says in his heart there is no God. That's so, the whole truth. Absolutely. Although, I, I, so I'm going to tell you, I've been in a lot of churches where I see the word of God wrongly divided or I just see the word of God just ignored. Mm -hmm. I have shared with you, uh, you know, a few years ago, a number of years ago, Alice and I were in, in a uh, a large church in Texas, as a matter of fact. Mm, yes. But the fact of the matter was that the pastor there, now I'd never met this man. I'd never been into this church. We were there as visitors because of somebody had asked to go, to go with him. And he preached a sermon, 20 minutes, 20 minutes on the button because you got to get it three times, you know, and if you're more than 20 minutes, uh, people will get upset and tired of hearing. Not like the days when Paul could preach for hours and hours and hours or Smith. Okay, I'm not going to go there. But the point is, the thing that he preached, the message that he preached, was absolutely inaccurate scripturally. Yes. And when I say inaccurate, it's not just that it didn't line up with the word. It was in direct contradiction to something that Jesus had taught in the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolute contradiction. Now, this was a very, very large church. Now, that's why they had divided into, I think, three services to handle the crowd. So at the end of the service, I walked up to him, and I, I said, again, I don't know this man from anybody, but I, I said to him, I, you realize that what you were saying is in contradiction to what Jesus said here in the Sermon on the Mount. And he looked at me and he said, well, I'm glad to see somebody still has a zeal for the Word of God, turned and walked away from me. That should have been more shocking to me than it was. The only problem is I've had too much experience like that, okay? You can go to a church and listen to somebody preach for their 20-minute session, and it's not necessarily the word of truth, right. not the word of truth, particularly in the days that we live in. This is what the Apostle Paul, again, wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, when he talks about in the last days, men will not endure sound, sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. So what they will do is they'll accumulate for themselves teachers who will teach according to their own desires, tickling their ears. Mm -hmm turning away from the truth and teaching myths, okay? So how do you know if what you're hearing is the truth? How do you know if what you're hearing is the word rightly divided? There's only one way. Test it against the word. You have to be abiding in the word. It's not like you can casually say, you know, kind of scan and flip pages and see if you hit it right. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, if you continue in my word, you're truly my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And if you have the word in you, the Holy Spirit will, will send up red flags. Absolutely. When there's something that's not scriptural. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thy word is strength. Thy word is power. Your word is kind.
And your word is true Thy word is a lamp Unto my feet And a light Unto my path Thy word have I hid O oh God In my heart My heart That I might not Sin again.